Okay, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for this month's Harley Gallery talk. My name is Fiona and I am the Education and Engagement Manager here at the Harley Gallery. Um, for those of you who haven't visited the Harley Gallery in person, we're based on the Welbeck Estate near Worksop. Um, we've got some information um, on the screen for you there, just a little bit about ourselves. Um, I'm going to pass on over to George Hardy, um, who is going to be delivering this month's talk for us. Um, just to let you know that if you have any questions at all um, during this talk, if you just type them into the chat box, we'll come to those at the end. Um, I have also muted everyone on arrival um, and we are recording, so just to let you know that. Um, brilliant, so I'm going to hand straight on over to George, who has brought lots of exciting props with him today. Um, so George, would you like to take it away? Yeah, certainly. Um, thanks very much for that. Uh, yeah, risk of being a bit like Blue Peter, um, I do have a lot of props because I'm more of a practical side person. Um, I'm the museum's technician here at Welbeck Abbey and the Portland Collection and anything practical involving the displaying, maintaining, cleaning, upkeep of artwork, I'm kind of involved with. Um, I also set up the exhibitions at the, um, the Harley Gallery too. And um, before I was working at Welbeck, I was an exhibitions technician uh, freelance, so setting up exhibitions for um, different shows, some uh, commercial galleries and um, public galleries and craft centres and various things. So, yeah, if it involves putting artwork and displaying artwork, um, I've sort of been involved in it. Um, from the standpoint, I don't want to come from like a super specialist in terms of it has to be done my way is the proper way. Um, there are lots of ways of putting different artworks up. But my background, just saying I'm speaking from experiences, from methods and techniques which have worked well for me and um, hopefully can work for you too. So um, other technicians I've met over the years have adopted sort of similar practices and various things like that. So I'm just going to do a bit of an overview of what things you might want to consider when displaying artwork. Um, again, there's that many products out there on the market. So if we're talking, say, fixings, I could go on for two hours about fixings alone. And um, that would not be much fun. So if I just overview some of the ones which I come in contact with quite a lot and if what people might be familiar with, that might be useful for people. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about frames, a little bit about fixings, um, maybe a little bit about something about having a, if you need to hang a particularly heavy artwork, there's a couple of fail safe ways you can go about it, but an easy way which has worked well for me. And then um, hopefully that'll be useful and um, a little bit about gallery layouts and how you might approach your wall at home if you're displaying artworks. So first of all, I'll talk about frames and framing. So if you've got the artwork you like, if it isn't framed already, you wanna put some consideration into the frames because you can have a, a lousy artwork, but it's beautifully mounted and framed and it will just look a million dollars. And likewise, if you've got a very nice artwork, but it's in a lousy frame, um, it's going to kind of take away from it. So a little bit of time and effort should be considered in picture frames. If you can avoid MDF frames, um, that would be better. It's not, it's not a nice material. They have the tendency to split and break if you're attaching fixings to them. A lot of uh, homeware stores tend to do MDF frames with a wrap and stuff. So if you can avoid these, that's better. So stick to timber frames. If um, budget is an issue, as it has been for a lot of us, um, charity shops are excellent for these. Um, my wife and I are suckers for collecting frames from charity shops and we'll take the pictures out and use the frames for the artworks we buy. And that's a really good, um, you know, easy way to get a nice stock of frames you can use. If you're going to do some bespoke framing or get a framer to make them for you, um, again, being a big picture framer as well myself, um, my suggestion would be if you're a little unsure what finish to get for your artwork, if you stick to a plain white or a plain black or a plain timber, um, you can't really go wrong with that. It's, it's timeless. They're, they're not going to age too much and they kind of go with everything. So whatever colour schemes you have, whatever exhibition you're involved with, 
they just kind of work. And um, I've seen some old frames from sort of 60s and 70s. And again, if they've been plain white, plain black or a timber, they, they age really well. So that, that's sort of my um, recommendation, if you like, if you're a little unsure about choosing frames. Because if you go for something like a bespoke, um, maybe a chrome effect with some colored beading and stuff, you'll find after a few years, it might look, start looking a bit dated. So pick some good frames and um, that'll put you in good stead before you put your artwork up. And once you have your frames, of course, you want to talk about fixings. So I'll start with low tech or low spec, should I say, and then move up to sort of a higher spec we use in the gallery and the museums. So the low tech of all are X hooks. So risk of sounding a bit blue Peter, here's one I made earlier. So X hooks um, often come in kits. You can get them from any hardware store or any sort of hobby craft place, and they sort of look like this. There'll be a kit with a cable and these hooks like this. Use two. If you use one, it's 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 not good enough. If I've taken a back office picture so you can see, if you're just using one hook like this, as soon as someone takes a rucksack off in your house, it's going to do it's going to do that. And that's no good. So if you use two, you just have a, a bit more stability and it keeps things level and looking nice. So again, I'll just quickly mention on my demonstration boards, I have this line here, which I've called a center line. So I'll talk about this in a bit. This is the line which is the center of every artwork you put up and it gives you a good kind of guide of what to work for. So this is just so you can see the positioning where your X hooks are gonna go with your center line. So that can be a little tricky when you're hanging. So when you turn your picture the other way, if you're hanging on one, which I don't recommend, if you get your tape measure and you pull it so it's got some tension, then you can see your measurement from the top of your picture and you can work out where you want it on your wall. Um, a lot of question I get asked is for positioning a D-ring. So if you're cabling up your artworks, um, D-ring position is quite tricky. So you want to go towards the top of your frame the easy method, which has just stuck with me, is I just do a third. So take this measurement, divide by three, and that's where your D-ring wants to be. It's not too high, it's going to foul on top of your frame, and it's not so low that your frame is going to sort of hang away from a wall like this. So, and that works for landscape, portrait. Just measure that, so say if it's 30 centimetres, 10 centimetres where your D-ring wants to be. Also, if you do get X-hooks, use the X-hooks provided, okay? Don't put the cable onto a screw or a little nail which is stuck in the wall because if you've got a thin brass cable like this and the brass is a copper base with a bit of zinc in it, if that's sat on a steel hook or a steel nail, um, you're gonna get a thing called galvanic corrosion. So after a year, if it's a very thin cable, it's gonna snap because you've got um, two different metals which aren't com compatible with each other. So it's just something to be aware about. So if you're gonna, buy a set of these, use the X-hooks provided, it's just better. These are excellent as a quick option, particularly if you've got forgiving walls at home. So say if you've got plasterboard walls, division walls, and of course you just need a hammer and a steady hand and um, that's sorted quite nicely. Um, the way I get away around that is I use cables throughout. I use a thing called soft strand. So this is, this is what I use. Now this is a, a steel cable but it's got a plastic coating on it. So it just creates a barrier between uh, whatever the job is and uh, your cable. And also because it's got this coating on it, if you cut it, it's not gonna splay out like a lot of cables do and you get the sharp bits, you can get your fingers on. So I highly recommend that if you can get a soft strand, it's excellent. And also as other applications, I use it for mount making as well. Cause again, I've got a barrier, so I'm not having metal on metal, there's um, you know, nice plastic coating as well with it. So that works really well if you're gonna do X hooks. Now with X hooks, ordinarily you'd position these, you tailor these to the frame. So you go wider to close to the frame, but the way I look at it, if you're gonna tailor to every picture where your X hooks are, you might as well use a more substantial fixing. So like a mirror plate, they're just better. You know, they're gonna be secure. They're not gonna tip up anywhere and it's just better. So it's a fail safe method. When I'm hanging small artworks with X hooks, um, I just use my, um, 
my method of measuring, which is a DVD case, everyone can find that. If you're doing a portrait picture that way, if you're doing a landscape picture that way, it's just easy. I know everything's uniform. And later on, if I want to take that picture off and put a photograph on there or something, you can do so. But again, if you're going to tailor towards a frame, I, I suggest getting a mirror plate. They're just so much better. So our next fixing will be your standard mirror plates. So these are good for all artworks. And um, if you're doing small artworks, um, dead easy positioning, if you put them halfway down your picture, halfway down, you've already got a measuring point you can work to. So when it comes to hanging things along a center line, um, you can hold your picture up and your mirror, mirror plate is already in the right position. So if you're doing a lot of works quickly, particularly if open shows, we suggest that mirror plates are already fitted halfway. Just makes it a lot quicker, a lot easier to put things up and everything's linear, everything's in line. Um, we still use, the, use these in exhibitions and in the museum and in the gallery. And they're just secure, they're strong. And larger work, say over sort of A1 size, I'd probably be tempted to put four on, um, just so they're a bit more secure. Um, but for most applications, these work well. Um, another, another nice touch is if you've got a back color of your wall, um, you can paint these out afterwards and it just blends in and it just looks really nice. Sometimes that's not always an option because you may have uh, wallpaper or something like that. So you, you can leave them blank if you want, but it does look nice if you sort of tie them in and paint them. If you do have a wallpaper and you're looking for another solution and you want a nice solid solution, we do have the next one up, which I use regularly in the gallery. These are my favorite now, purely because they're hidden. These are spring lock fixings, these ones. Um, I hope you guys can see those. So much of the same as mirror plates, so you fit, fit halfway down your picture and dead easy. And the plus side is they are hidden. So when you have your contemporary artwork, you can hang them just as you would a mirror plate. Often if you're doing larger pieces, I put, a, put a third one in the bottom just to stop this sort of rocker, which you can get. And they have uh, these nice locks which come in. So these, just lock in the back and of course it doesn't matter what you've got on the back of your wall they're all hidden they're secure and they're really good for using in the gallery they come with a, a tool like this for getting them out with so there's a key and also got a handy marking option here as well so when you're marking your wall you can put that in there's a little point here so you can find your position on the wall so you can get them in there and um, Again, I, I love these. I, I buy, buy these by the kilo and we use them throughout and they just handy. Extra good for um, if you've got children and you want to keep things like screws and stuff away from little fingers. In my, um, my son's bedroom, who's three, um, I hang things using these. So an another method, which may be relevant to some folks as well, is if you have a hanging system. So this, we have in the Abbey, which already has a rail system. A lot of commercial businesses will use these. If you have a look in a state agent window, they'll have some sort of hanging system. They're quite expensive to install. And if you're buying cables, so if I'm doing a classic oil painting, often, particularly in the Abbey, they'll have wall hangings, wall hangings or maybe bespoke wallpaper on the hanging systems. So. They're ideal when you're swapping out artworks as the gentry in past would, would have done. And um, if you've got, um, you know, bespoke wallpaper and that kind of thing, it's, it's good because you're not doing any drilling, you're just hanging from the ceiling. So often uh, little cottages and stuff will have um, a picture rail and a lot of folks don't actually realize what it is. And it's, it's purely for this. You can buy the bespoke hooks for the moldings and you can hang artworks on. They're a little bit limited to how you're hanging things. So if I'm hanging another artwork underneath it, you want to make sure your fixings are all parallel. Otherwise you can end up with your, your chain sort of sticking out like this. But if you don't already have a picture rail in your house, I'd, I'd suggest against this just because they're, they're fiendishly expensive and they're quite tricky to sort of install but very useful if you're swapping artworks out very regularly and which is great when we're doing the abbey hands. So 
Another tricky thing I often get asked is if you're doing something really heavy. So we do have these fixings, which we use in the gallery. These are called link hangers. So these are, more affectionately, we start calling these dog and bones because these look like a dog biscuit. And this could be the dog and they link together like this. They are excellent if you've got a, an awkward back on your frame. So at the back of your frame, you've got a nice big canvas and a molding on it. If it protrudes from the back, it's quite tricky to get a mirror plate or anything onto this. So these really come into their own. So it doesn't matter how thick this back recess is. Hang them onto the wall and it will sit nice and flush. Now, from a conservation standpoint, I would build this up if I have time and keep it so it's all flat to the wall. But I hope you guys can see that. It sits really nice and flush. They're stress tested to 100 kilos. So if you're, you've got two fixings on, they'll hang something up to 100 kilos. And like the heaviest thing we have in the collection, I think top to scales are about sort of 80 kilos. So they're more than ample for um, those kinds of things. But again, fiendishly expensive. And um, if you need, you know, several packs of them, I think they're about, I think about 15, 20 quid a set, which is, um, yeah, it's a, a lot of money. So if I'm doing a heavy artwork at home, if, if I was using link hangers, you need a few bodies to lift the thing in place before you can actually stick it on the wall. So the fail safe method I use for doing super heavy artworks is to use a pair of L brackets. You can get these from hardware stores, anything sort of tailored to your frame, something as sort of small as this to heavy duty things, depending how big your artwork is. Do you measure down half from what your frame is and you make sure you get these nice and level. And, um, you know, I'll be using um, raw plug screws, um, whatever is suitable for my wall just makes it easier because you've got a base to work from. So if you haven't got a lot of people to hold up the artwork while you're marking, yourself, if you can manage it on your own, you can lift the thing in place. But if I've got a really big, heavy artwork, I can get some on the other end. We can lift it on, sit it on that. I know all the weight is taken on those L brackets. So one person can just hold it to it, get it to what position I want. I can mark it. Take it off, maybe drill it. The four mirror plates, top and bottom. The reason I do top and bottom on the larger pieces is simply if you've got a really large piece which is kind of above, uh, above your eye level and below your eye level, you're not actually going to see these. So from the side, it looks like it's floating and it looks really nice. Um, if, if I'm doing a tricky artwork, particularly if I've only got like one extra body to help me lift it into place, this is just excellent. Um, you can embellish a little bit by um, taking these down or sm uh, using smaller fixings. I always put a little pad between the actual um, fixing and the artwork. Those little furniture pads you get, the felt ones, work ideal. Um, we use a sort of conservation plaster, so it's quite expensive. But again, you can, um, uh, yeah, furniture pad pads work ideal. You're not going to scratch anything. And if you have an earthquake, that picture's still staying on the wall. So yeah, a fail safe method for all that. So once we have all our fixings, we need to start thinking about um, a, a layout. So there are two sort of, I guess, standard sort of hangs that I tend to use. There'll be a, a, what I call a standard hang, which is where we use a center line. So the center line is the center of each picture and you can keep everything looking linear and it just works for whatever display you're doing. Often it'll have to be dictated maybe by your furniture or if you've got um, maybe a radiator you're working around or a, a high window, you'll have to kind of tweak which sort of center line you're gonna work from. But it's, um, a really neat way of just making artworks look absolutely tidy. And I treat every wall separately as a display. So if I'm breaking up the gallery, first thing we'll empty the gallery. And the key thing for laying out your artworks is get your artworks in the gallery. Just get them physically in there. The amount of exhibitions we had, we've had really excellent setups and extra excellent planning. 
And I've even had augmented realities when they hold an iPad up and you can see where the artwork's going. Again, it, none of that matters until you physically get the artwork in the gallery. So if you can move your furniture out of the way, lay artworks out and you can work your layout then and you can tinker, you can move things around. Um, I try and leave a margin between the artworks as well. So if I'm thinking of a wall and I might have six artworks on there and I'm trying to sort of center them on the wall, I have a little bit of space where the returning wall may be or maybe where there's a doorway, same in the exhibition space. My rough rule of thumb is sort of shoulder width apart. Because if you're looking at an artwork, um, you don't want to get too, you want a bit of space around it so you can sort of step away and look at it. So I tend to sort of go for about 40, 50, 60 centimeters. Sometimes if it's a really big piece and really big gallery, we might go a meter, something like that. But at home, sort of 40, 50, 60 centimeters normally works well. And um, also with your center lines, if you've got choices which you use, we use 150 centimeters in the gallery here. In the museum, we use 155. And I think in some spots in the Abbey, we hang at about 175. Um, lower is better. It's, um, I, I tend to go for the lower one purely because it's easier for a tall person to duck down than it is for a small person or maybe a wheelchair user or a, a, a child to kind of crane themselves up. So lower is sort of better. And also bear in mind in your house, if you've Unless you're entertaining every weekend and you've got everyone stood around in your lounge in your kitchen, like I'm not, um, normally you're going to be sat down when you're looking at this stuff. So, um, sort of bear that in mind when you're sort of displaying artwork. So, I've got my artworks laid out, I've got them in my space. I have a little bit of space either side. Um, I can show you how to work these out if I can go to the board. Um, sorry, guys, I'm going to have to move you a bit. So, if, if this is one of my walls, I'm going to have my artworks on here, and I want to make sure they're nice and uniform. So, I want them to sit nice and line on our, our centre line, and I want them all to sit nice. I might have, um, as I said, 50 centimetres that side, 50 centimetres that side, and it just gives, it, gives us some nice margins for where they're going to be hanging. So to work out our spacing, no matter how large your frames are, if I want to work this out to keep it uniform, let's say this is going to be five metres. So what I would do is you can go along with your tape measure and work out and do spacing. Like I said, if you lens everything out, the easy sort of cheap method I do, I stack all my artworks up into the corner, up on the wall, which I'm about to hang. So I've got all my artwork stacked up and I measure the artworks as a whole. So let's say that's three meters. Okay, so we've got two meters, two meters of space to play with. So we've already got 50 and 50 empty space outside, so that's one meter. So I've got one meter left. So I divide one meter by the spaces I have between the artworks. So I've got five spaces, one meter, 20 centimeters apart. I'll lay them out again, make sure I'm happy with them. And that's where they go on the wall. And they're gonna be beautifully um, uh, positioned. It's, it all looks uniform, doesn't matter how big your artworks are or how small your artworks, it's just gonna look look nice. One thing to consider, if you're doing like a little double hang, like two artworks with each other, often a mistake folks make is unless they are perfectly uniform frames, people just assume that that's their centre line. So if they're not perfectly uniform frames, so if they're something like, something like this, best thing to do is lay them on a table, Mark out your spacing, but treat this as one artwork. So you, you want to do your measurement from there. So if that's 30 centimetres, 15 centimetres is going to be my centre line. So your centre line is actually going to be halfway through this artwork. So it's just to bear in mind, if you want everything to flow on this nice centre line, don't just assume it's going to be in between the artworks. Okay, lay stuff out and work it out before. So that's the sort of standard hang. The other hang we sort of go for would be um, a salon hang. So a salon hang traditionally would have been uh, when you have a group show, group collectors, 
groups of artists um, putting artworks together. You're trying to cram as much artwork in as possible. Um, the, the RA Summer Show is an excellent one for this. They do floor to ceiling and they fit all the artworks in. Um, our open shows, we tend to go for this purely because there's so much artwork. So um, there's several ways you can do this. Um, uh, one good way, say if you're doing a stairwell at home or you're doing a small wall feature and maybe you've got 10 or eight sort of uh, frame photographs you like, if you cut the templates out into cardboard and you, you simply tape them on the wall to the position you want and you can work out where you want your layouts and when you've got your layouts you simply hold your artwork up to the template and you can mark level and put your artworks up, that's one way to do it. My preferred method is to lay things out on um, a blanket on the floor as I'm doing in the gallery or on tables because I like to tinker with colours and things. So, um, you know, two colours might not clash a little bit, so I want to separate those artworks and same with, I might tend to go big, small, big, small, that kind of thing. Um, with the open shows here at the Harley Gallery, so this is an image of one of the open shows, um, I did a bit of both. So we're doing a salon hang in terms of we're trying to cram the artwork in and you can have lots of fun with this. Um, we have a pink artwork here and that was really close to this artwork I remember so we sort of split it up a bit but also I was running with a, a linear center line with this as well so my the tallest artwork here and the lowest artwork here is exactly equal distance from where we have our center line so you have this really nice linear line of where the artworks are going but they're still um, they still look a bit sort of this like controlled randomness kind of thing where they're on the on the display and um, it's nice to have like a focal point so we've got this really large colourful artwork as you come into the gallery. So that would be the sort of salon approach or salon centerline approach. Um, the centerline sort of standard hang also works well with classical artworks as well. So this is the um, first Portland collection exhibition. Again, we've got lots of classic artworks, but we're running with this beautiful centerline and keeping equal distance between the artworks and it, it just works. And um, it makes me happy because it, it, it's just so uniform, so nice. And depending on the size of your artworks, the largest artwork might di dictate where your sort of centerline is being. But um, yeah, it just works really well. So um, a hang we have also in the Abbey, this is Print Corridor. This again, it's a bit of a mixture of both. And this is using the rail system. So I'm not sure if you can see it on that picture if I hold it up. Um, with a rail system, you do have these um, vertical lines coming off every artwork. So um, that's, again, it sort of limits you to how you're hanging things if you're gonna double hang anything, because um, you have to make sure your chain's gonna look parallel. Um, but I try and approach the um, display is all in the same way. And um, it's something I also apply in my own home. So um, I better show I practice what I preach. So this is my this is my lounge. You have to forgive the enormous telly. That, um, that was a new addition. We did have a smaller telly. Um, but if you notice, I've got different, different frames, different artworks as well, but I'm following this nice center line and sort of equal distance um, of the displays. And I also have, uh, a couple of guitars on the wall and you'll notice this sound hole again is on my center line and it just it, it just works really well a bit of space again sort of 40 50 60 centimeters away from the edge of a wall so you can view things and again this is sort of dictated a bit by my furniture and this is the other one above but above the sofa again i've kind of bookended with two guitars and i've got artworks up so it's it's one i can have a lot of fun with when I'm just doing a, a display at home, but it's also one which um, I hope other folks can have fun with as well. If, um, if in doubt, if artists are a little unsure of how they want it, I'll stick to a standard sort of equal distance and using this a nice center line and it just, just works really well. So um, yeah, I, I hope some of that is useful um, for folks. Um, I, I do have a lot of fun setting up the displays here. So I'm hoping um, yeah, you folks can go off and have some fun displaying stuff in your house as well. So yeah, um, thank you. Um, well, thank you so much for, for that, George. Honestly, um, I learned a, a great deal and I'm sure everyone watching at home has as well. Um, so just to let you guys know for our future talks, if you're interested, um, we've got a talk on the 29th of July, so in a month's time, 
with Dr. Lauren Batt. Um, she's going to be talking about the fifth Duke of Portland um, and setting him in context with um, his contemporary, the, the sixth Duke of Devonshire. Um, so that will be a really interesting talk. And then we're taking a break for August and we'll be back at the end of September um, looking at the new exhibition of miniatures in the Portland Collection, which I know you were responsible for helping to set up as well, George. So we're going to be talking to uh, Sophia Mitzola and Dr. Rebecca Birrell um, about that display. So thank you very much, George. Thank you for everyone at home for joining us. Um, and yeah, we hope to see you again in the future.